What's life well lived? How would you define success? Well, we're going to talk about that today as we uh, tackle the theme of balance on today's broadcast here of our Overcome, Overcomer video blog. I want to welcome you out today. I'm Dr. John Hawkins. I'm the president of Gateway Counseling Center uh, located right here in Boynton Beach. I'm glad you've taken the time to join with us. Hopefully we'll cover some things today that will uh, be helpful and beneficial, you know, in your life. Well, there'll be a lot of different definitions of success that uh, people have, but to really come up with that idea, and it's going to be related to balance. That's one of the things that we're going to find out because success isn't in just one area. You know, people think of finances, material things, but success in a lot of areas of life, we'll mention some of those. But if we're going to have true success in uh, the areas that are really important in our life, we have to learn how to balance our life, have a, a well-rounded life. You know, to be able to do that, we have to be able to take some time for self-reflection, gaining some self-awareness in our life. Be able to step back and see the big picture of life's you know, realities. Now, I wrote an article about this on our blog site. Blog site. You can go to uh, gatewaycounseling.com and check that out. There'll be a little more detail there. But one of the things we should keep in mind is that we all have a limited time on this earth. And uh, one of the things, if you've been around very long, you realize is, boy, it goes by, you know, quick. And the only thing uh, we have control over is what do we do with our life? As someone said, what do we do with our life between the dashes? You know, from the time we were born to the time we die, the dash is that little spot in between where all of our life is, you know, put together. Now, we have emotional needs in life. We have physical needs, uh, spiritual, relational. And if you ask most people what they'd want, it's, well, I'd like to be happy in life. I'd like to learn how to be content in life. And that's going to come out of a life that's well-balanced. And I think one of the problems that we face, and I think most people would agree today, is that we live at a pace that God never intended for us to live. We're time starved. We can't, uh, it just seems like we don't have enough time to do what needs to get done in a day or a week. How many times have we said, well, I wish I had more than 24 hours in a day or more than seven days in a week. But the reality is that's all God's given us. He gave us 24 hours, seven days in a week, 365 days in a year. Uh, therefore, he must have thought that would be sufficient. If we needed more, he would have given it to us. The only thing we don't know is, well, how many days you know, do we have? But what we have to learn is, how do I manage the days that I have? You know, taking life one day at a time. And I've got to be able to step back and realize, maybe I'm trying to cram too much into my life more than what is humanly possible. You know, if you have a, a pitcher of water, you can only get so much into it. And um, after that, it's going to overflow. Or maybe if it's made of material, it's going to break, you know, at the seam. And so why is that? Why are we so time starved? Well, I think there's different reasons. One are the demands and expectations of our modern society. You know, we are plugged in. 24 7 with iPhones and email and all kinds of technology so it's like we're never off and people can always get us people are always checking their watches checking their phones and it's not like when you checked out at work and and then you were off uh, I think another reason sometimes is we don't have a life goal we don't know what we're really here for and if we don't know what we're here for and what we're trying to achieve, it's easy to just kind of flounder around and waste time. And sometimes we knew it at one time, but we kind of lost sight of it. So I think it's important for us to find the passion to our life. You know, what was I born for? Why am I here? Uh, you know, when I talk about my emotional needs and desires, as well as physical needs, you know, if I can figure out my life goal, what I often refer to as God's design, then I work backwards. I say, okay, so this is where I want to get to. This is where I am. So what steps do I have to take to get from here to here? So the key to having a balanced life is I need to know where I'm going. I need to know 
what I want to accomplish in my life. How do I want to be remembered? What is the legacy I want to leave? You know, when it comes time for my eulogy, what do I want people to be saying about me? Once I know where I'm trying to end up, and then if I take a good assessment of where I am, now I can live intentionally to get from where I am to where I want to go. But I have to, that goal is really critical. It's like someone said, you know, I was climbing the ladder of success and I realized it was leaning against the wrong wall. We don't want to be in that situation. So um, priorities are going to be important. When I get those goals set up, I'm going to establish priorities. And I want to be able to distinguish the urgent from the important. You know, everything is important. Everybody, everything is important. They want it now. They can't wait on it. But a lot of times we find out it's not as important as what people think. So um, the urgent versus the important. It's putting everything in the right order. That means we have to be ruthless about our schedule. We can't really allow everybody else to set it. I'm going to set my schedule by certain values, priorities, and they're going to be linked to my goals in life. That helps me know what to say yes to and what to say no to. Now, I'm going to leave some space in there for margin, and I'm going to leave some space in there for divine intervention. Sometimes what we see is an inconvenience or an interruption is really a divine intervention or a divine interruption where God wants us to be at this place at this time to accomplish this thing. But we have to watch out for our culture that we don't get caught up into the rat race. You know, it starts in an early age, especially now. You know, our kids can get indoctrinated into it, get sucked into this time-starved, time-starved, pressured lifestyle where, you know, it, it's everything is highly structured. You know, we, we start, you know, at two years old, they got to get into the right preschool, and then they got to take all the right courses in school, and they, they've got to get all the AP classes, and they got to graduate from college by the time they finish high school, and all of that stuff. You know, there was a time when we just, you know, kids went outside and played. Sure, we had some little league, and we had some structure to it, but it was not so pressured. People went out and played, and there's a purpose in play, you know, for kids. Now, what we see today is we see this huge rise of anxiety among young children, elementary age children. And I think some of that comes from being overstructured, high expectations, unreasonable expectations. I think technology, there's been some studies about, you know, video games, iPhones, kids on that way more hours than what they need to be and anxiety has gone up, you know, uh, because of that, even to the point of addiction. So, you know, you think of that, you know, we, we go through life and we say, why don't we do all that? Well, because I want to be able to get eventually into the right college. Why? Well, I want to get a good job. Why? So I can make a good income. Why? So I can have the American dream and buy a house and buy all this stuff. Why? So I can impress people that I don't really care that much about. Why? So I can die and leave it all for somebody else to enjoy it after me. Sometimes when we think that through, it doesn't seem to make that much sense. What's really important? Well, if we're going to live a balanced life, we're going to uh, have to learn to live counterculturally. And that's a challenge. You know, we can't go back to the 50s or the 1800s. We, we live where we are. So how do I not let my culture determine so much in my life? And that's where I think the principles that God lays down for us will be helpful, you know, in that. But I want to identify just a, a few areas of our life and quickly mention, and you can read more about it uh, on the written blog. Uh, these are some areas, and you might think of some other ones that we need to balance. Number one is the spiritual. I think that's uh, key because everything flows from the spiritual. Now, whether people want to admit it or not, we're spiritual beings. And uh, sometimes we will recognize that. But if we're spiritual beings, there's a God who made us. If he made us, he knows how to make everything work. So we ought to check in with him once in a while to find out 
how's all this stuff supposed to work? You know, give me an idea. Don't let me just wander through life and then figure it out at the end after I've already lived all my life. Let me get it from the beginning so I know what to do. So number one priority, and if you don't catch anything else, you know, here's not a, not a list of 12 things you need to do. That can get overwhelming. But just focus on one. Let me develop a relationship with God. Spend a little time there. Let him speak to me. And let him entrust that he can put me into balance. Now, the second thing is self-care. I have to take care of me. I only have one body to live in. That means, you know, I need to eat right. I need to exercise. I need to sleep. Uh, we're we're a sleep deprived nation. I need a good seven, eight, maybe nine hours. Women tend to need more sleep, you know, than men. Uh, I need to get enough good quality, you know, sleep. I need to take care of my health. Maybe go see the doctor, get some regular, you know, checkups. But make all of that a priority. You know the basics: food, exercise, you know, sleep. Being able to relax and de-stress sometimes. Taking care of me, I'm worth it. Here's another one, family relationships. I always say life is about relationships. What makes us happy in life? What makes us stressed? Well, how the relationships are going. How's the marriage going? Do I have a healthy, happy marriage? How are the kids doing? You know, am I setting a model for them? Show them how to make a marriage work and how to uh, parent. Um, and as a parent, I'm trying to teach my kids about life skills and character development and morals and spiritual values. And if I'm single, developing healthy friendships, um, other friends that can be an encouragement to me, you know, and can help me. Here's another area, and this is what most people think of and where we spend a lot of our time, and that's what I call work and career. Now, we do have fair physical needs, and we live in a material world, so we need money. We need money to provide the things that we need in life. But, you know, we want to have a career that we enjoy. Uh, we spend a lot of time at work, and 70% of people hate the job that they do. Oh, that's tough, getting up every day, going to do something like that. And work has dignity to it. It's, it's a part of the original current uh, creative plan. And that's what gives us purpose and fulfillment so often in our life. Now, there's all kinds of different jobs. We don't all do the same thing because we don't have the same talents, abilities, and skills. But it's kind of figuring out what are my interests and abilities and, and my desires and talents and what I have a passion for and be able to put that all together and, and be able to make a living at that. That's the sweet spot of life. And then balance that you know life is more than work but work is important and then the idea of others in the world how do I give back you know if you want to be happy there's two key traits to get into our life generosity and gratefulness living for a cause that's bigger than me not just thinking about myself but living outside of myself and then one of the last things I want to mention is what I call personal development. How do I develop the best version of me? How do I maximize my life potential? Well, that means I need to be willing to be a lifelong learner, doing things like reading, having mentors, exposing myself to opportunities that will stretch me. And like I said earlier, having goals and having friends that make me better, that are positive influence. You know, this idea of this principle of redeeming the time. You know, you can listen to what I've said today, and if you look at it as like a checklist of, uh, you know, half a dozen things that you need to add to your to-do list, it's just going to stress you out, make you feel more overwhelmed and more time starved. Hope you won't see it that way. Uh, some of it may sound kind of old-fashioned and out of touch with today's realities, but look around at today's realities. Look at how people are living. Look, look what's going on in our world, in our country, in people's lives. And how does that seem to be working out? Maybe it wouldn't be so bad if we went back to some old ways and kind of redid how we lived and how we reprioritized our life. 
you know, what we want to do is, is not let the urgent get priority of the important, not let the good become the enemy of the best. And it's not about giving equal amounts of time. It's the appropriate amount of time to these different areas. I hope you'll take some time and read the article. You know, time is one thing. It's probably the most valuable thing we have because once we spend it, we can never get it back again. We can make more money. But if we could be some more help in helping you bring balance into your life, why don't you go on gatewaycounseling.com, give us a call, and uh, let one of our trained counselors and coaches try to be a help to you in attaining that, that balance. So you could be able to have a life well-lived and a life in balance. Until next time, uh, I hope you find that balance, get a little bit better at it. And remember, you can be an overcomer. Well, goodbye and God bless you, and we'll be talking to you soon.